Uh, Greg Valliere is with us now. He's AGF Investments Chief U.S. Policy Strategist. Um, Greg, what do you make of this move, and what do you expect in terms of the narratives that are going to come out of the RNC versus the DNC last week? Well, first of all, Julie, he's always outside of the box. We have to just plan on something like that happening. I guess everyone in his family will be there speaking. I, I don't think it extends to Stormy Daniels, but I think he's going to have a big crowd of, uh, of people who were cl uh, close to him. Uh, I would say that a, a couple of things. Number one, I think he's got to go right after Joe Biden's agenda. I think going after Biden's mental acuity is, is not a winner because Biden was pretty sharp on Thursday night. But when it comes to all the taxes that Biden is talking about, when it comes to urban violence, I think that uh, Trump will make a big deal of uh, Biden's agenda or lack of agenda. Uh, secondly, I think the other big thing Trump has to do is to appeal more to college educated women. His numbers are terrible with college educated women. He's got to bring them up a bit. And I, I think if he can accomplish those two things, maybe by Labor Day, we're down to a six or seven point race, but Biden still is the favorite. Greg, do you think that Donald Trump is going to be able to successfully argue, given that kind of comment from Joe Biden, that Joe Biden is going to raise everyone's taxes? Yes, because it's not just for people who make over $400,000. They're talking about a Wall Street transaction tax. They're talking about higher capital gains taxes. They're talking about higher estate taxes. So in addition, of course, to uh, uh, higher corporate rates, the corporate rates would go up by quite a bit, and there probably would be a minimum corporate tax. All of the corporate tax taxes would get passed along to consumers. So it's disingenuous for him to say it wouldn't affect anyone under 400,000. I think it would, and I think the Republicans will make that point. Hey, Greg, it's Julia LaRoche, and great to be with you again. Uh, if you look back to the DNC last week, a, a major theme that really emerged was empathy and character. Uh, and you mentioned at the top of this conversation, President Trump really has to win over some groups, including college-educated women. How does he do that? What do you think his strategy is going to be when we're coming off of the heels of the DNC that was really talking about character and empathy? Well, first of all, I think he ought to tone it down a notch with the personal insults, you know, Sleepy Joe and all the insults he gives people. Uh, I think that the harshness of his rhetoric has hurt him with a lot of key groups like college educated women. I mean, Trump already has the base. He's got the, the right wing base locked up. There's nothing he can do to jeopardize that. So wh why not say, I've got that. Let's see if I can move a little more toward the middle, talk more perhaps about education, maybe about urban violence. But I, I think that the tone of his rhetoric sometimes can be so nasty that it's a turnoff. I think he needs to, again, n forget about his base. He's got to look at other new voters. Hey, Greg, it's Brian Chung here. What's been interesting to watch from the DNC's angle is the appeal to some, I guess, if you want to call them moderate Republicans, right? John Kasich, uh, the former governor of Ohio, speaking there. And then there's, I think, two dozen or so uh, former GOP members of Congress that have supported Joe Biden, including former uh, GOP Senator uh, Jeff Flake. I guess I'm wondering, is that uh, casting a shadow on the RNC? I know Mitch McConnell and some other establishment Republicans are speaking there, but what type of tone do you expect to hear from them? Because as we know, a lot of them have also been uh, kind of disappointed, if you will, with some of the rhetoric that you were just uh, talking about in the last answer. Well, I don't see them really overtly breaking from Trump. They haven't yet, but I don't think they will now. Uh, I think they'll still uh, stick with him, but they need to think about the consequences if Biden wins the Senate and the House. The House is going to stay liberal. We all know that. But I think there's, there's a decent chance the Senate could go as well. And you could have a so-called blue wave. That's something the financial markets traditionally don't like. Uh, they like divided government more than anything else. So I, I, think, I think Trump has to be careful, again, as I said before, with his rhetoric. He's got to be more inclusive. You know, that's like a touchy-feely word for him. But he needs to be more inclusive because he cannot win re-election with just his base. Just real quick, Greg, can he do that? Is he capable of doing that? 
Well, isn't that a good question, Julie? I, I think that he has a problem staying on message. You know, he may go off and talk about QAnon or his relatives or, you know, the vaccine. See, he does stray from his message frequently. I think if he stays on message and talks about what he might do in the next four years, I haven't heard a lot about what he might do. So there's plenty of opportunity, in my opinion, to close this by Labor Day to a six or seven point uh, Biden lead. And then I think things will get tighter as we go into October. All right, we shall see. Greg Valliere, AGF Investments Chief U.S. Policy Strategist. Great to talk to you as always. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.